Does God's goodness keep him from hurting us? I confess that I find it a little strange that I have to answer this question. And so I'm going to give you a little bit of uh, background about how it came to pass. It happened in the providence of God that I happened to watch a, I don't know, if it was a TV show or a, a video podcast or something uh, that had as a guest a particular uh, pastor talking about oh, the election and Trump and prophecy and all of that. And I I was intrigued by the fellow. I enjoyed him. I, and one of the things that really struck me about him was he, he did a great job not talking about himself. That's a, a common problem in general, problem I probably share. Uh, but this guy wasn't so much talking about himself. And that intrigued me enough that I... Uh, track down a couple of his books and one of those books is titled something like god is absolutely good and i thought well what what is that about is there somebody out there that's saying he's only partly good well i took a look at it and i read through it and in this book uh the arguments are made in defense of the idea that God is absolutely good. And every time those arguments are made, they're perfectly fine arguments because it's a true conclusion. But what he has connected to this is that because God is absolutely good, he never hurts us. I have a really hard time understanding how anybody could believe that having read through the Bible. I want to start with, though I could certainly go all the way back to the flood, you know, God hurt everyone, but Noah and his wife and his three sons and their wives. God hurt Pharaoh. In fact, the Bible says that God raised up Pharaoh so that God could make his glory, God's glory, Known. He propped him up to knock him down like a cat holding up an almost dead mouse so he could whack it. Oh, but that's unbelievers, you say. Hmm. Well, are there believers that God hurt? Of course there are. Um, exhibit A would be Paul. Paul, I've got this thorn in my flesh. Would you remove it? God's answer is no. Now you can argue, well, this is God being passive. But how did that thorn get there in the first place? And how does it make any moral difference if God has the power to remove it and doesn't? Or God put it there in the first place? It's the same thing, morally speaking. God heard, oh, even clearer in Hebrews. The author of Hebrews, I believe Paul again, the author of Hebrews is very straightforward talking about how our heavenly father punishes us because he loves us. And he notes that, that nobody enjoys being punished. It hurts. God in his grace, because he is good, because he loves us, not only brings harm and hurt to our and his enemies, but he brings it to us as well. So that we will cry out to him. So that we will cling to him. So that we will learn to not be so foolish. Uh, friends, watch out. Pay attention to what you're listening to. It sounds wonderful. Oh, God is absolutely good. Yes, he is. Absolutely, absolutely good. And therefore, he doesn't ever hurt you. No. If he doesn't hurt me and I get hurt, then he may be absolutely good, but he's not all powerful. If he doesn't want me to hurt and I hurt, then he's not all, pow all powerful. God is absolutely good. 
and absolutely all-powerful. And every bit of pain that he sends our way, he sends for our good and for his glory, for we who belong to him. My stars, he hurt his perfect son so that we might be made as children. 